theme park wizard shop for all exclusive merch. Link below. We're back. Theme Park Wizard, I'm live from Pixar Pier again. I keep getting this VIP access from, from Bob Chapek over here. Um, and we're here with George and Chris, live from Pennsylvania, the cold Pennsylvania, in 85 degrees Woodland Hills area. That's not where it lives, but I don't want to say where it lives. And we're here. <laughs> Welcome back. We have great things to discuss, like someone went to an actual theme park. <laughs> How was that? Well, I will say it was much better weather down there as it is up here right now. Because as you can see, everyone, that I'm uh, sporting a nice hoodie right now, but I did not need that in Orlando. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, yeah, I saw you guys. Uh, you took, went to all four parks, right? Yes. <laughs> and you were like, no one's on your train, I saw. Or from the pictures you posted, it looked like it was just you. And your wife, and you have the whole train to yourself, or yeah. whole car to yourself. Yes. Interesting. Yes. Interesting. Yeah, it was. It was so nice just being back, and it's. I, I was saying to Chris how many times that, for me, that if while well, Disney World can open up, with the capacity that they have and the rules, restrictions, regulations, or what have you so can Disneyland. It's all coming from the same company. Yes, Disneyland and Walt Disney World run the same exact, uh, sorry, completely different, but they're run by the same company. So, you know, what's good for the goose is good for the gander. You know what I want to bring up to you guys, actually, what, since we're on the topic of, of Disneyland reopening and everything, real quick, and then George, I'll let you jump back into your trip report, but I just wanted to bring this up before I forgot, forget. It's funny that Newsom, you know, in his guidelines, separated the the big parks with the small parks, right? So small mm -hmm. parks open first, you know, bigger parks have to wait. But, you know, it's interesting. You know, he didn't do that with anything else. Like, a Walmart is massive, you know? A Costco mm -hmm. is massive. And that can open at the same time as your local mom and pop store down the street. That's, you know, a tiny little hole in the wall. It's just funny with theme parks, you decide to... <laughs> based on size, but there's no other industry that I can think of in California that he's done that with. That is true. And in his latest press conference, or the, the one like on Friday or something, it mentioned he nothing. noticed, yeah, he didn't, he, he mentioned, he's like, he said, we all know, uh, maybe I have four kids. Um, I'll meet you there. I have four kids. <laughs> um, I'm gonna, what do you say? I, I want, we all want to go this the entertainment giant we all know and love. He never said the word Disney or Disneyland. It was hilarious. <laughs> just, so you know, just so you know, Ethan, when you said, I thought actually Newsom said, I'll meet you there. I thought I for a second you got my hopes up. I thought, oh, wait, he's, he's actually getting <laughs> in. Is he going to open it? <laughs> I, I wish, jeez, but yeah, he doesn't want to say their name. They're like they hate them. They hate them all. Yeah, well, I think I think I think Newsom and Iger, and we'll never know the full story, but they, I think they got into it. I think there's a lot of bad blood between those two, <laughs> and uh, that's why he let. That's why Bob Iger left the board or the the the, the task force or whatever they called it. And uh, there's a lot of bad blood because Newsom's tone towards Disney changed a lot. If you remember back in March. He was like, oh, yeah, he you know, they can Disney do whatever they want. Whatever. Yeah, those are the, exem they're the exemption theme parks. Everyone else had to close, and they're the exemption. But now, now they're, oh, I guess now they're the exemption again, but in a bad way. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> like, wow. But, yeah, so, you know, they didn't have any, like, they didn't have any fireworks testing at Epcot, right? Because I know that I saw them testing fireworks. They, they started doing the testing after... Um, after the fact we left, but they were bringing in um, all sorts of barges and, and mm -hmm. things for uh, Harmonious. So Harmonious is actually still on, maybe not on time, but they're still working on it. That makes sense, because you know, Epcot has a massive lake, so you can put those boxes and socially distance the crowd, you know, see the show, if that's what they're planning to do, if you still need to do that. Uh, when it, 2021? Is that when that's supposed to happen? I believe it was supposed to be 2021. Yeah. Oh, interesting. Cool. 
And then the meet and greets, the how they do it. They are they still behind yeah, as fences? As far as with the meet and greets, they have like their own sections. Like at Epcot, they have Joy from Inside Out and Winnie the Pooh walking around like the grass, um, with the trees and everything. Sort of like in their own natural environment. I just saw Joy spinning in a circle. <laughs> <laughs> and then Winnie the Pooh. At times, he's out there like with a, a net trying to catch. Um, like trying to catch bees for like honey and stuff. So, I mean, it's pretty cool, but I mean, I do miss the interaction that you actually have with the characters, but- um, Was it uh, was it busy? How are the wait times? Um, and the overall crowd level? Did it, it feel was, like more than it, 25%? Oh yeah, it was definitely, oh, hold on one second, I'm sorry. Hold on one second. Ooh. Boom, 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 boom. <laughs> <laughs> it's Jeopardy, folks. Yes, 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 yes. Um, yeah, that's interesting, though, know, that the, that they did that with, with like the meet and greets, how they have them like in the planters, basically. You know, yeah, <laughs> it sounds like they're like a zoo, like they're like in an enclosure, and Winnie the Pooh is like a bear, just where you're watching him like an animal kingdom. <laughs> It's kind of hilarious. It's kind of hilarious. <laughs> okay, I'm so very sorry. I'm so very sorry. I don't know. It's okay. We're just playing Jeopardy music the whole time. Oh, cool. <laughs> so anyway, yeah, it was... Here's the funny thing, and this is what I'm still trying to figure out, and a lot of people uh, kind of go both ways that they say that the parks only can hold 25% capacity, but there are times where you look at it, and it actually looks like a normal every given day that you go to the parks and you think are they did they up the capacity and from my perspective this is how i see it is when you look at the park it first off to have the the social distancing you have six feet apart so when you have people standing in line for a ride the line is going to look much bigger than what it really is because mm -hmm. each group you're six you're six feet apart right they don't have as many a, not everything is open, you know, as we've all seen this past week with the live entertainment, you know, 18,000 Disney World cast members have been laid off. So to not have any of the shows, just the, you know, the attraction. So all people are going to be really spread out to say, okay, X amount of people are at this show, X amount of people are at that show, you know, they're all going for the rides. And then, you, you know, so I think it's more so that they kept the 25% capacity for Walt Disney World, but I think a lot of people are starting to get a little more comfortable to go back to the parks. So I, I still think it's at the 25% capacity, but people are just looking at it as more people are showing up. Yeah, because uh, people, whoever's think <laughs> the parks can hold like a lot of people. So 25% of like 80,000 is still a lot of people, but early on, when they first opened, there's like a spike in cases, so people weren't going, but now they're more comfortable. So it's probably, I agree, George, probably 25%, but just, you know, 25% of like 80,000 people is still like, I don't want to do the math, but it's like thousands of thousands of pets, especially something like Hollywood Studios. It's a smallish type of place, so it's going to feel more crowded. That's where all the new stuff is anyway. Yeah, I, out of all the parks, the most crowded is Hollywood Studios compared for. Uh, Rise of the Resistance, Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway, uh, Toy Story Land. So, I mean, and then you just have the classics of like with Tower of Terror, Rock and Roller Coaster. Did you get to get on Rise of the Resistance this time? Yes, both days got on. Wow. Twice. Congrats. What do you think? It is, I must say, I couldn't really find a ride that could be somewhat compared to Flight of Passage at Pandora, but I must say that rise now became part of my top three attractions wow oh wow well i couldn't get on it so I, i'll have to find out in 2021 huh? oh same <laughs> with you chris huh? i actually went on it one time with oh my, no with my sister with my sister she had she had uh she she got well long story short but i ended up last minute going with her um and uh, i went on it one time but that was it then then the park shut down Oh man, so now I'm the only one left. <laughs> <laughs> so was everyone, uh, for the most part, most people, 
wearing the mat, like following the rules and wearing the mask. And stuff. As far as what I've seen, everyone pretty much, you know, was abide buying it. But I mean, for the people that did have it down a little bit below their nose and everything, the cast members, you know, nicely approached them and said, excuse me, I'm sorry, but you have to put it up over your nose. And the guests complied to it very well. I mean, there was no irate guests or nothing like that. Yeah. And that seems to be the biggest issue with, that seems to be the biggest issue with the masks. Like a lot of people say like people aren't wearing masks, but I think people are wearing masks, but a lot of them aren't wearing them properly. You know, wearing a mask and having it down here does you no good. <laughs> wearing a mask and not covering your nose does you no good. And I see that all the time around here, like at supermarkets and the mall, whatever. The people just aren't wearing them right, you know? Yeah, yeah I see a lot of that too. So and then cool. as far as with like which is still kind of nice in a way because with the attractions like um rise of the resistance we had our own escape pod all to ourselves like oh, we, we we weren't like with anybody else we had our own but now that they're adding up the pe plexiglass i think that they're still gonna start um adding multiple families into one ride vehicle oh. um but then as, as with the transportation goes, I kind of like this with the transport, especially with the buses, because Disney buses can get so jam-packed, overcrowded, waiting. Almost, I, I remember waiting almost 45 minutes for the bus back to the hotel from Magic Kingdom. Wow. And oh, wow. this time they had six buses for the Magic Kingdom lined up waiting. Yeah, and I'm surprised they, they don't do that already. Yeah, that's what they really should do on a normal day basis. But they um, don't fill up the buses all the way, but they have them markered. So depending on how many people are in your family, they'll say, okay, sit in section three or sit in section five. So you get your own space and everything, and it's not crowded. And I kind of hope that they keep that as far as the transportation goes. Man, so you felt safer at Disney World than you do at your local grocery store in Pennsylvania. I felt more safe <laughs> at Walt Disney World than walking into a Target or a Walmart or Giant Eagle or what have you. Me too. Although I'm not sure what Giant Eagle is, but yeah, hey, yeah, that's we're, 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 <laughs> we're Californians, uh, George. We have no idea what Giant <laughs> Eagle is. <laughs> is that like a sports star? Uh, or Giant, Giant Eagle is like a um, oversized grocery store. Oh, interesting. Well, you touched upon live entertainment that got taken out of the parks or just now at Disney World. And it, you said it obviously it affected your experience. Now, Fresh Bake made a video on this today, and he had some thoughts of how Disney was already taking out live entertainment before the pandemic. And Chris watched this video, and he has some interesting thoughts. What are, you, what are your thoughts? Okay, so basically Dave's argument in this video was that, you know, yes, um, these current cuts, um, you know, are attributed to COVID-19, right? But his argument was that Disney's sort of been doing this for a long time. They've been sort of cutting entertainment through the years. And he kind of touched upon the idea that maybe that, you know, Disney has been wanting to get rid of entertainment for a long time. And COVID was just like the, like the catalyst to kind of justify it. Right. And I, I actually disagree with that. I actually disagree with that. Um, and I'll tell you why you have a lot of new additions. Okay. That like, for example, Avengers campus, which is brand new. It hasn't even opened yet. And within the infrastructure of Avengers Campus, they 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 they've they've kind of uh, they've added like a stage area for the Doctor Strange show. They they put a whole lot of money into that back flipping Spider Man animatronic. Now, for a company that is thinking about phasing out entertainment, and and it's been, you know, the plan for years and years and years. Uh, I don't think they would do what they did with Avengers Campus. You know what I'm saying? Like they wouldn't spend all that money to have the infrastructure, you know, uh, g give us those stage shows and the animatronic and everything. If the plan was to to kind of phase out entertainment, I, I just don't see it happening. I think entertainment, at least daytime entertainment, is very temporary. And what I mean by that is, if there's a daytime show like the Trolley Boys over at DCA. I miss those guys. I miss them too. I love those guys. But 
those kind of shows are always meant to be like a short term thing. Like you're not going to have the trolley boys there for 20 years. It is not mm-hmm. going to happen. It's not an attraction. Like, you know, like a physical attraction. It's not a nighttime thing with nighttime stuff has a little bit, a longer shelf life. Daytime entertainment just doesn't last that long. And you have to go into it with that mindset that these entertainment groups or whatever are only going to be there probably for a couple of years and that's it. So I think it's just the natural life cycle for this stuff. I don't think there's any like conspiracy or plan. I just think Mm -hmm. that a lot of these shows, they just get cut and then new thing will come in and replace it. Yeah. That's what uh, happened with the, uh, the band on Pixar Pier as well. So I have two sides to this and this is my, this is only my opinion. Mm -hmm. I agree with you, Chris. And also, I agree with Dave. And you're probably thinking, well, how can I agree with both? (laughs) Here's my take on it. As far as with the the long-term shows, like, well, for Walt Disney World anyways, Finding Nemo the Musical, Festival of the Lion King, um, uh, Turtle Talk with Crush, Fantasmic. Now, what's so surprising is, out of all the shows that got cut thus far, Nothing was mentioned about Fantasmic. That was actually very surprising to me. Or Frozen. Isn't that coming back? Right. Frozen's <laughs> coming back. So it was, it was Festival of the Lion King, uh, Turtle Talk with Crush, the Indiana Jones Epic Stunt Spectacular, Beauty and the Beast Live. Those shows are pretty much, I mean, unless they're being replaced with a new up-to-date show, those marquees are pretty much guaranteed to stay. The theater for Beauty and the Beast, the theater for Festival of the Lion King, for Finding Nemo the Musical, they're all going to stay. So I can understand that notion of they're temporarily taking them out for the cost cutting. You know, with the 50th on the way, they have all these new attractions that are coming up. They need to still have a budget for Tron. They have to still have a budget for the Guardians coaster. They just put up the, um, the sign for uh, Ratatouille at the France. I don't know if you uh, guys caught that, but, um, yeah, we, I saw that one. Yeah. Nice. So I'm really excited about that. Um, so I'm assuming, and they also, Disney just filed a permit to start possibly working on spaceship earth again. Uh, at mm-hmm. Epcot. so I think, you know, with these, with the budget costs, as far as laying off all these cast members, it's very unfortunate, but I think Disney's hands are tied are pretty much like which way to go. Um, Now, the part where I agree somewhat with Dave is the notion that prior to COVID, when Bob Chapek was the, um, the chairman for parks, he was starting to pull out, as far as in Walt Disney World goes, some of the shows like the Muppets at Liberty Square, a lot of the shows that may not be huge to a lot of people like the normal everyday family that's going for like their first time. But us as Disney fans, it's a staple when we go to Disney, you know? So a lot of, you know, families may not hurt, have heard of uh, Yeehaw Bob or like all those side shows, like at the Polynesian or at the wilderness, like Mickey's backyard barbecue or what have you. But there were some things that were being kind of, cut cost cutting when Bob Chapek was helming the the parks division at the time. So it just makes me question that now that he's CEO, could he be taken the opportunity to say, Oh, well, if we have to temporarily cut these shows, they'll be back, but temporarily, then why not cut these? Why not cut these? And more of the independent shows, I'll say, than the, the big mainstream shows is where I question the fact of, will these shows really come back after all this is said and done? Because in the end, JPEG worked in consumer products. You know, that's where his, even he's headlining Disney Plus. Why? Because it's a streaming service. I can't really foresee Che Peck as as far as with him with the CEO, but as far as like with the the parks, I never really could see him in that role where at least with Eisner, Eisner went into the parks. He dawned on the Mickey ears. He he was one of the guests where 
even with, you know, Iger at the time, you know, they're more corporate. And that's where I question the fact of how much of this was just cost cutting and how much of this was still part of JPEG's plan to cut regardless. And that's where I kind of see it both ways. Yeah. And, you know, George, um, I do think that I think that Disney management or the Disney executives, I think I do think that and maybe this is kind of agreeing with with you and Dave a little bit. But um, I do think they see entertainment right? Like the daytime entertainment stuff as extra gravy, basically, right? Mm -hmm. Not the, not the prior, not the prime reason why people go to the parks. So I feel like, you know, in times like this, when they're, when they're basically trying to survive, you know, essentially th those things are more expendable for right or wrong. You know what I'm saying? It's just in right. their mind, they see those things as more expendable. They feel like the attractions are what people really go for. And the entertainment is nice. It's a nice little add-on, but in times of desperation, those are more exactly. easily cut, you know? And I'm actually going to quote Chapek, not word for word, but sort of something like when he said that right now, annual pass holders really aren't the priority because they're getting more of their bank buck, so to speak, from these vacation um families that are going down maybe just for like one time, but they're going in spending merchandise, spending for merchandise, spending for food. And that's where, you know, the, the money is where for annual pass holders, you know, we can go in, walk around, take some pictures and walk out, you know, right. for, for him in his eyes, he's not seeing the, um, you, you know, what, what it is for annual pass holders. So, that's where I kind of see it as like for us diehard Disney fans, you know, we may not stop and watch the Dapper Dan's every single time. We may not stop and see the citizens on Main Street or the citizens of Hollywood, but we know they're there. You know, they're, they're, they're mixed in with the theme. They're, they're, they're mm -hmm. part of the theme. They're part of the land. We know they're there, but I think now... As, as you just said, with the desperation of trying to get people back, they're looking at the more broader picture of saying, okay, rides and attractions are the main priority. Because even Disney right now, they said even for the part-timer cast members, for attractions and custodial, they are not being laid off. Wow. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Interesting. But the whole entertainment division is out. Yes. Yeah. But but part-time cast members for attractions and custodial, they were guaranteed they would not be laid off. Oh, well, lucky that much. Well, now, let me, let me ask you, George, you're more of a Florida guy. Um, it, do you feel that, like, the entertainment cuts under JPEG have been more Florida-like heavy? Because I feel like at Disneyland, I feel like we haven't seen the bloodbath, aside from COVID, you know, even before this, like that Florida has. Is that is that a correct assessment or is that not? No, I actually think you're right there because I think with Walt Disney World, there's so many more hotels that are so, much, you know, that are themed that even within the hotels tell a story. And they tend to have live entertainment there like for for instance like um the the polynesian they have like the um the polynesian show and everything and for the fort wilderness they have mickey's backyard barbecue where they have the characters come for like a campfire and then uh, also with the hoop de doo review which is a live show when you go eat over at fort wilderness so there's many factors to live entertainment with walt disney world that's beyond the theme parks where I think with you guys, you know, you guys still have the subtlety, like over at Pixar Place, you guys have the band, you know, you still have the Dapper Dance, but um, the Newsboys for uh, uh, Buena Vista Street. But I don't think you guys have it as the level where I, I don't think like it's too, it, it draws too much attention for them to say, okay, we really don't have to cut that because Disneyland, it's a full day, but it's it's dwarf compared to Walt Disney World. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Hmm. Yeah, interesting. Wow. 
Oh, gosh. Hopefully that entertainment comes back it's ASAP, like in 2022. <laughs> 2022. Yeah, that, that's, what, that's what we're shooting for. Newsom is shooting for 2022 reopen. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, Newsom will be like a 2100 reopening. But, yeah. You know, you know, except if you're in Santa Cruz. Santa Cruz opens up pretty soon. Santa Cruz Beach Boardwalk. I might have to take a drive up there. Just might. But, but uh, did I think that they even announced today that Disney did uh, kind of announce, I don't know if they officially announced, but someone said that Disney said that, you know, to reassure all the, the guests and the fans that live entertainment will be back. They didn't specify. Oh, yeah, I saw that they somewhere. Yeah, they didn't specify when, but they said in time it will. Yeah, and I think it will. I mean, definitely. They're not gonna, I don't think they're going to completely nuke the entertainment stuff. Um, I don't think, though, necessarily the same acts will come back. Like, for example, at Disneyland, you know, they canceled Mickey, Mickey's Magical Map, right? Or Mickey and the Magical mm -hmm. Map. That, that show has been around since 2013. I mean, let's be honest. They were probably thinking of getting rid of that before COVID. And COVID yeah. just expedited its demise. But that mm. show is never coming back. I mean, there will be a show in that theater again. I'm sure of it. But it won't be Mickey and the Magical Map. You Here, know what here's, I'm the, here's the funny thing. When I saw that and they said Frozen and Mickey's Magical Map will not come back, the first thing that popped in my head was that is Disney's golden opportunity because now without Frozen being there Hollywood land is now completely wide open to revamp it to whatever they want it to oh, and yeah. without a magical map there they can take away that theater exactly yes. so that can yeah. open up for fantasy land that was the first thing I've seen people almost kind of going banana saying oh we're not going to have Frozen we're not going to have Mickey's magical map and I'm thinking why not <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I don't, I don't mind, you know, and I've, I, I really, I don't like the, the theater, the Fantasyland theater. I think it looks very, it's, it's just some um, tense, like, yeah, on poles. yeah, it's a vinyl tense, you know, it's been there forever and it's, it's a pretty sizable spot. I'd rather see something else put there and if they want to keep entertainment there, that's fine, but give us a more permanent looking theater. I think it looks pretty, 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 I don't know, cheap looking, you know? Yeah, it looks like a festival or something. Yeah, yeah. Like, you know, give, give us the Seven Dwarfs Mine Train. Put that bad boy right there. Yes, please. <laughs> well, now, here's the thing. That wouldn't surprise me because I think now, especially with cost cutting, Disney is going to take as many duplicates and copycats as possible so they can get new stuff in the resorts. But as you mentioned, uh, Chris, many times in your videos that Disney tends to use that, especially with saving money. And yeah. this is the best time to save money because they can't spend over the amount. So, I mean, they could put in the Seven Dwarfs Mine Train. They could put in possibly that. They could even put the same ride system, but just re-theme it to mm -hmm. whatever they want. Sort of like what they're doing Frozen uh, overseas. Right. Yeah, exactly. They could have a completely different IP, mm. but have the same ride system. I mean, you could easily make that roller coaster a frozen roller coaster. I mean, it wouldn't take too much effort to do that. Um, you know, frozen kind of has those wooden looking, uh, you know, aesthetic, you know what I'm saying? In the, in, mm -hmm. in, in, in the design work and stuff, I could easily see those little mine carts with like Norwegian art on the side mm -hmm. and it would, it would be a frozen ride. It wouldn't even be, it wouldn't even take that much to do that. And gentlemen, that's what we call the universal technique just plop the same ride at all the same parts. <laughs> 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 Which has its pros and its cons. You know, like people in Japan, if they wanted to go to Harry Potter, they just go right there and they'll fly all the way over here. So that's pretty good. And I know that they really don't go too much off of Tokyo because Tokyo has their own budget. They have their own workings. But that would be awesome if they could put in the, the Beauty and the Beast ride right where yeah, the magical just, map is. Just, they should plop that over here. You know, I'll, I'll be honest with you guys. A lot of fans complain about cloning. They're like, oh, cloning is terrible. Cloning is terrible. Mm -hmm. I don't know about you. I love saving money. And if I don't mm -hmm. fly to go somewhere to ride something else, exactly. in my backyard, bring it on. I'm totally but yet, cool at the same that. time, people <laughs> were 
as you're saying, people are complaining about cloning, but I'm sorry, at the D23 Expo, when they announced Ratatouille was coming to the France Pavilion and Tron was coming to the Magic Kingdom, the whole arena went nuts. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, I'm cool with cloning. I I'm totally cool with it. I, I, yeah, I mean, yeah, as long as they don't clone bad rides, only clone good rides. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Now bring Tron to Disneyland. You know. Please. <laughs> the thing is, you know, you can thank the Spires for anything. It'll getting rid of the subs faster and faster and faster. Take away those subs and plop it right there. There you go. Right there. Come on. I, mean, I am. I am happy about it but i'm still somewhat concerned is they extended the refurbishment for our people mover Ooh. till january 9th so i mean oh, yeah. mind you our people mover has been having a lot of technical issues so i'm glad that while it's yeah, done it didn't they catch it, on a fire yeah <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're giving it some tlc which i'm very glad about but I don't know if it's just the extent that that needs to be worked on, but this is like the fourth time that they extended the refurbishment. It's and I'm like, I hope they're not planning pulling a Disneyland on us here. <laughs> well, we're going to extend it indefinitely. And then oops, we're going to demolish it. <laughs> yeah. Because you know what? Like I, 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 Ethan, you're, you're pretty young. I don't know. Did you ever ride the rocket rods? Probably not. I have not. They were around when I was live, but I have never ridden them. Okay. So the rocket rods were only there for like a couple of years, I think. But there was a sign sitting out front of the rocket rods, you know, reopening spring of 2001. We're still waiting for it. <laughs> <laughs> it's, coming, it's coming very, very shortly. Yeah, very, very soon. I think <laughs> Governor Newsom wrote that sign. <laughs> very, very soon. <laughs> but but it never came, and I'm worried. Like you said, George, like this is one of those things where they're kicking it down the kicking the can down the road, and then one day it's just not going to ever reopen again. You know, it'll just be radio silence. You know. Although if like, or you, you don't live there, but I feel like you know, if someone who goes, if I feel like as long as it's actively being worked on, you like see people working on it each day. Then I feel like that's true. It's like an actual thing. But well, I feel they, like no, no one. It was on it. something. They said it was something with the magnetics part of the track. And they said, I think that they're actually fully replacing the whole entire track. I and, did hear that somewhere. And like they still ago. have the cars. They still have the cars sitting there. So they didn't remove them. <laughs> so yeah. that's probably a yeah. good sign. Yeah, hmm. well, my, my heart goes out, hopefully, because I think you guys are the only people mover now, right? I just Ever, yeah. I, yeah. I think, I think <laughs> honestly, if they were to take out the people mover, I, I think <laughs> I don't know about the Disney fans, but I think they'll uh, they'll be very opinionated. <laughs> <laughs> well, us Californians are still complaining about not having it, and it's been yeah, twenty plus years. <laughs> with a slap, it's a slap in the face, and it sits right in front of Tomorrowland, just sitting there teasing everybody. And, and honestly, <laughs> I actually think me personally. I mean, I still want to keep it in Florida, but I really think that they should make a replica for both coasts and I, cause I think it's a very important att attraction is you guys should still have the carousel of progress. Yeah, I would oh, love to yeah. have that out here. I, I can't- Nice updated that version, that'd be pretty cool. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, oh no, so you both are APs. I wonder how this one works with yours, cause you're both, oh, did you cancel your premiere pass? No, I actually, no, I still have mine. Here's the funny thing, they told me that well, my Walt Disney World part is active. My Disneyland is not. So, so do you get it, some money back or something? Or? Well, no. Here's the thing. I can't get no money back for the Disneyland part unless I cancel the whole entire pass. Oh, man. Oh, well, yeah. So when I renew uh, in January, I have to renew just as a Walt Disney World annual pass. And then they told me, still keep your premiere pass because you're going to get four, about four or five months worth of it for Disneyland. You know, huh. speak, speaking of AP, I don't know if, uh, are you still an AP, Ethan? Are you still AP? Uh, well, I have the, I have the, the, the little three-day pass thing, but <laughs> now it's going to get an actual one, but I, you know, Tokyo, they're and they're temporarily pausing theirs. So I was going to ask you, Chris, since you're a signature plus yes. pass, if they temporarily pause ours or, or get rid of it, you know, uh, how well, would you I'm feel? Gonna actually, oh, how, if they, if they, oh, if they, if, if they, they, if 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 they, if
feel since you you, know, you pay so you have the highest or one of the higher ones and you pay like a lot of money for it. Yeah, I've had I've had an annual pass since February of oh, 2003. Shit. So I, I I've been a pass holder since 2003, a very very long time. So I love having a pass. I would be I would be sad if they got rid of the passes for a while, you know. But I, I could I could realistically see them doing that. I mean, right now basically they're giving that. Well, they did. They get they gave annual pass holders the option to extend the pass at however many months, right? That they're closed. Mm -hmm. Well, now we're pushing a long time here. So what are they going to do? They're going to give everyone a, a year free. Cause that's what we're coming down to almost, right? Yeah, and, the whole year. So, and, and here's another interesting thing. I'm gonna read it to you guys, but we got an email actually the other day and my heart dropped to my pinky toe when I saw this, okay? Um, I got the dear valued annual pass holder email. Those are never mm -hmm. good. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Those are never good, but I'm sure a lot of you gotten this too, but um, let me see what it says here. Uh, so it basically says here, I'll read it to you so you guys can kind of see what's going on. Um, it says here, after an already incredibly difficult month for the Disneyland Resort, we are heartbroken and disappointed and understand you may feel the same. We want to thank you immensely for your patience since our closure and let you know that we continue to think about you as a valued annual pass holder. And then it goes on, on to say, we also want you to know that the efforts to reopen Disneyland will continue as we're to seek solutions to bring the cast back to work, get our local economy, economy moving, and share the magic in all our theme parks. And it says that we will keep in touch with you as soon as we can to share more details. So it sounds like that they're gonna they're gonna they're gonna give us they're gonna drop another bombshell on us. It sounds like from this email mm -hmm. that there's there's big changes coming and they're gonna give us details going forward. But I also believe that, and this is why I kept on going back and forth, whether or not I wanted to keep my annual pass or cancel. Every time that I had a doubt about canceling, I stopped and I just kept it because yeah. just in case if they do temporarily let go of all the annual passes, whenever it comes time for them to restart back up, there's a possibility that everyone that still had a pass will still get to keep the way the pass works who even knows that if they're coming up with a new kind of annual pass and whoever is then a new member right will then have those new but you you can't get grandfathered into the original what well, what well, and you won't get grandfathered in like let's say for example like that's my exact thought process that's why i always keep my pass because i want to have that grandfathered in kind of thing right but if, mm. if disney decides because this is kind of an unprecedented situation if disneyland decides we're, we're going to suspend all of them. So basically when they reopen the program, everyone is new, you know? Yeah, so that's what I was thinking as well. grandfathered in thing, you know? That's scary. Yeah. It really is. <laughs> yeah, because I was thinking if they cancel, <laughs> they like start fresh, so they want to have like all these backlogs, then like you'd all be a brand new pass member. Because be when, did, when did actual annual pass holders start? Like w where was the actual start it, it, when Disney... It was, to my, the best of my knowledge, and I could be wrong, correct me in the comments if I am, uh, um, I think it was like early 90s, I believe. Like, like somewhere between like the late 80s and early 90s is when they started, I believe. Okay. From what I understand. Annual pass. Oh, he's, Ethan's checking it. June 1983. 83, wow, even wow. sooner. Mm, well, we, that's a... Wow, it's a long, long time. 37 years. Yeah. <laughs> yep. And it's all coming to an end. No, <laughs> <laughs> it's all. <laughs> yeah. But that also makes me wonder, could they be using it to their advantage? Because in 2022, as they specified that this D23 Expo is going to more so be about the 100 years of the company. Right. So could they then announce something new that may take the place of an annual pass where it's not as complicated, where if something like this ever were to happen again, knock on wood, that, I mean, unlike Disneyland, because you guys are still going through it. <laughs> yeah, through it. 
you know, I, I it does make me wonder. I, I have questions. Yeah, that email, oh, uh, that email definitely, definitely. I, I didn't want to read the whole thing to you guys because it's long, but that email definitely suggests that changes are coming and we'll give you details when we can. So who knows what those changes are, but um, I'm imagining because of the current situation, it's probably not going to be great news. I mean, I'm sure it's probably along the lines of what you said, George, like they're suspending the program indefinitely because they can't, they can't just keep extending out our, our passes. Eventually you're going to be giving people like what, 18 months free or something. Like, they- <laughs> yeah. well, here's, well, here's the thing with Walt Disney world. I was only getting the months free as far as when it, when there was the closure to when my pass expired. So if the parks didn't open by the time it expired, then I could have had the option to say, okay, do I want to renew or do I want to let it go? But I would still get the time from when it closed to my expiration date. So is Disneyland's different? Um, from what I understand, Disneyland, if you, if you want the extension, from what I understand, if you want the extension, basically what they'll do is however many months that they're closed, they're going to extend those months to the end of your expiration. Oh, so like okay. since they, I, mine expires in January, right? It was supposed to expire in January. I and mean, if they were closed for five months, that expiration date would be pushed back to May now. Five May. Months gotcha. Later. Gotcha. That's how it works out here from what I understand. Okay. So it's pretty much a given fact. You guys are going to have two years worth on your annual passes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, just but, about. Well, yeah, but I don't think they're gonna. I think that's what this. No, is they're they'll, they'll never. And that's where Bob Chapek was saying, in a sense, that it's. I, I think that was probably his hint of saying that annual passes really aren't the key factor here as far as getting the parks back running again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe he'll force everyone just to buy tickets for the foreseeable future. And another problem with the passes, at least here, is uh, when we eventually open up in 2030, well, then uh, <laughs> then it's going to be a reservation for whatever capacity you need. So, I mean, if you with all those passes, like a million of them, then like no nor no regular people are going to get to go because the reservations like with Rise of the Resistance we snapped up in seconds. Yeah. So like a normal, no, no one will ever get to go unless you're an annual pass holder. And so I feel like, you know, because of that also, they'll probably suspend the program. So everyone and make everyone just buy tickets because everyone, so everyone has a fair, fair chance to go instead of just all the passengers snapping up tickets or maybe you get like two per But then if you get like two per month, then your pass, Chris, which even though it's the highest one, basically turns into its flex pass. Right. So therefore, you should get four hundred dollars back. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's the other thing. If if yeah. I have to make a reservation every time I go to the park, then it's no longer the pass I paid for because the reservation system is basically it, it, it it's basically blackouts, right? Because let's say, for example, if I request next Tuesday, I want to I want to go to the park next Tuesday, and I get denied because it's full. Well, then that day is essentially a blackout day for me because I can't mm-hmm. go. So I'm paying $1,400 or $1,500 for my pass. It's supposed to have blackout dates. Now it's basically giving me blackout dates because I can't make the reservation on days I want to make them. But that's where I think it's going to be even more difficult for Disneyland because one, Disneyland heavily relies on annual pass holders. Two, even with Walt Disney World, you're guaranteed those dates if you're booked in a Disney Resort hotel. At Disneyland, you guys only have three resorts, and let's be honest, they're not they're not valued. <laughs> no, no, the first one starts so at six hundred dollars. I can't really foresee that if they follow the steps of how Walt Disney World does it, that there's going to be a lot of people that aren't going to be able to get those dates that they really want. Mm-hmm. Plus, if they're already purchasing tickets for specific dates, then they'd have to call and change the dates on their tickets. Yeah. It's a mm-hmm. big- yeah, so that would be quite the conundrum when we reopen in 2045. Yeah, <laughs> 2045. <laughs> is Newsom going to bail out Disneyland? Is he going to say? Is he going to bail them out for uh, the? Uh, he won't even say their name. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. I'll probably say the Six Flags before. Although, yeah, he he never he doesn't say Disneyland's name. 
but he just doesn't even mention the other theme park's names at all. So, gosh, he must really hate the other ones. He never says Six Flags and nothing. <laughs> I'm like, wow, poor guy. Although he was here today. I wonder, he was at Dodger Stadium for the testing. I wonder if he, you know, took a peek at Universal and said, hey, uh, Ha ha sucker or something. And that's how and that's how you know for, for me it's honestly like a mind game. Why yeah. would you send your your people Don to observe Walt Disney World? Yeah, he, I know. Had, I know. he had no intentions at the end <laughs> to come back and say, Okay, yeah, let's open up the parks. No. Yeah. And and I think it's I think it's either for I think it's for it's either A, um just political theater just to mm -hmm. make it seem like he's doing something or b maybe it's to protect his 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 rear end legally if disney decides to come back at him he can say well i i made the effort i went down to florida i wasn't happy with what i saw you know he it kind of gives him that that way out maybe legally maybe i don't know but, but then he said he sent his teams here it's the Disney and Universal and the Santa Monica Pier, and they all passed with flying colors. They recommended no changes, so I feel like you can that can be used against them legally. Oh, it, wow. it, it's, it's it's a huge con contradicting situation, <laughs> and I personally think that what happened was when he was a kid and he went to Disneyland, he didn't get the moss ears that he wanted, and now he's scarred for life. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's exactly. Or maybe, maybe he didn't go at all. Maybe his, maybe he wanted to go, and his parents just, He needs just to go. I think Dad would probably, I think <laughs> if he was to actually go, walk into the park, ride some rides, have a Dole Whip, he might change his mind. Yeah. Well, you know, that's what they should do. Disney should set up a day for not just his strike team, but Newsom himself to come over there, Hire for one day the entertainment and all that to full a full Disneyland day, and then he if he doesn't come out smiling after that, then he must be evil. Well, well, you know Newsom has I from what I understand Newsom actually has his own winery in Northern California that was allowed to reopen before all the other wineries, by the way. Yeah, exactly, exactly. But science and data, Ethan. It was science and data. <laughs> <laughs> science and data. Um, <laughs> But, you know, what if Disney decided, hey, you know what, Newsom, you let us reopen, we'll sell your wine at our resort, you know? Or, you know, <laughs> DCA. Take it to Napa Rose. <laughs> yeah, there you go, Napa Rose. That has that little winery thing. DCA should be able to reopen because it has those that little winery area, so it's a winery at now. So they should, the whole <laughs> but, of course, he's going to want his face plastered all over the bottle <laughs> like Paul Newman. Yeah, he will. <laughs> <laughs> he spends too much money on that hair. There's no way he's not putting his yeah. face on that. And oh it's, yeah, no, it's like it goes like it goes all perfect. With, with the there. amount of money that he has and the amount of money that he makes, he can go into Disneyland every single day. If I had his money, I'd be living at the parks. I wouldn't be keeping them closed. <laughs> I know. Yeah. I'd, I'd, have, I'd have to open them first, and I'd put my residence in the next to Walt's apartment. There you <laughs> go, man. That's the, that's the prime real estate right there. Yeah. yeah. Well, thank you guys for coming on. It was a great, quick, but fast discussion. Subscribe to George's Disney Family Man 23 for some great videos of Disney World that I think are there or will be yeah. there in the future. <laughs> and subscribe to Orange Grove. Get him to 3,000. He's only like something I'm like, away. I'm like 100, 100 away. I'm 100 away 100 now. 100 away. The same amount I'm away from 1,000. So subscribe to me too. And as always, have a fantastic day. And don't forget to vote. And don't vote. I mean, no, no, vote. Right, what are you saying? <laughs> <laughs> what are you saying? <laughs> don't forget to vote. I'm not part of voter suppression. <laughs> <laughs> Mm, that